Okay, so here's one really, really key example of the determinant. If you remember, to find the determinant, in this case of a 3 by 3 matrix, we can use cofactor expansion along any row or column of our choice. The question is, sometimes, is there a best choice of row or best choice of column? If you look at this matrix right here, the entry in the third row first column is actually equal to zero. And because of this, the best choice of row is the third row for cofactor expansion, and the best choice of column is the first column for cofactor expansion. Let's see why, in the case of determinants, zeros are really good. So let's find here the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix with cofactor expansion, say, along row 3. Picking any other row will yield way too much work. And the same thing, if you're going to pick a column, it has to be the first column because it contains a 0. All right, so this is the entry A31 times its cofactor C31 plus A32 times its cofactor C32 plus A33 times its cofactor C33. So we have the cofactor expansion along the third row. Let's replace now the entries of the matrix. And you see right here, A31 is equal to 0. So we don't have to bother computing the cofactor C31. Whatever the value is, we're multiplying by 0. So this will just get cancelled. So every time you have a 0, you do not have to compute the corresponding cofactor. So the more zeros you have, the easier your job will be. Here we only have a single 0, so the best we can do is a choice of row or column that will contain that 0 entry. Now let's find the other two entries. A32 is 1, so that's just plus C32, plus A33 is 5, times C33. So instead of three cofactors, we only have to compute two cofactors. Let's find them. C32 Remember, there are two parts. There's the first part, negative 1 to the sum of the two indices. 3 plus 1 is 2. Negative 1 to the 5 is negative 1. That's negative 1. Determinant obtained from A, after we delete the third row, second column. And this gives us the matrix 3, 9, negative 2, negative 2. So it's negative of... 3 times negative 2, right? This is a 2 by 2 matrix. The determinant is a D minus B, C. So 3 by negative 2, negative 6. Negative of negative 2 times 9, that's negative negative 18, so plus 18. So we have negative of 18 minus 6, 12. So C32, negative 12. What about C33? Well, here we have no negative sign because negative 1 to the 3 plus 3, negative 1 to the 6, is positive 1. Determinant of the matrix obtained from A after we delete the third row, third column. Third row, third column will give us the matrix 3, negative 6, negative 2, 7. Once again, we have a 2 by 2 matrix, AD minus BC. 3 times 7 is 21, minus negative 2 times negative 6, positive 12 which gives us positive 9. We can go back. C32, negative 12, plus 5 times C33, 5 times 9, 45. Negative 12 plus 45, positive 33. And we have found the determinant of this matrix. Now, the question is, what if we have a matrix that doesn't have a single zero entry? Since we already have figured out that zeros are good, could we perhaps find a way to introduce zeros in the matrix so that we have to compute less cofactors, which therefore makes our computation of the determinant much easier? And the answer is yes, of course, using our row operations. So the question is, we have three types of row operations. How will they affect the determinant? So suppose you have a square matrix A. 
Well, the first type of row operations would be the swapping of two rows. So suppose that we swap row i with row j. And the rows have to be different, right? If you swap the row with itself, nothing happens. So here where i is different from j. The question is, OK, you take the matrix A, you swap two of its rows, you get a new matrix B. The question is, how does the determinant of B compare to the determinant of A? And the answer is, the determinant of B is the negative of the determinant of A. So if you swap two rows of a matrix, the determinant becomes negated. We can look at a very simple example. And these three properties for each row operation are actually very difficult to prove for general square matrices. So all we'll do is we'll check that it works for two by two matrices. So suppose you take A as an example to be a two by two matrix A, B, C, D. Then its determinant we know is simply A, D minus B, C. So AD minus BC. What if we now take B to be the matrix obtained from A after we swap row 1 with row 2? Well, we'll have CD the first row. Second row is AB. And what's the determinant of B? Well, it's C times B, BC, minus A times D, minus AD. And if you notice, this entry is the negative. If you factor a negative sign, you get negative of AD minus BC. And AD minus BC is exactly the determinant of A. So the determinant of B is the negative of the determinant of A. So that's our first property. If you swap two rows, the determinant becomes negated. Well, what else can we do? Well, our second type of row operations, let me take a different page. We can multiply a row by a scalar. So take a square matrix A and say that we will multiply row i by k, where k is any real number. And we have, therefore, a new matrix B. So if we do this, here's what happens. The determinant of B will actually be k times the determinant of so if you multiply a single row of a matrix by a real number, the determinant is multiplied by k. The determinant of the new matrix B is k times the original determinant. This one is actually simpler to think for an arbitrary square matrix. Think of it this way. You can find a determinant using cofactor expansion along any row or any column of your choice. So if you multiply the ith row by k, we'll use cofactor expansion along this row Every entry is multiplied by k, factor k out, and you get k times the original determinant. And we can check this just for 2 by 2. Suppose a again is a, b, c, d. Its determinant, as we previously checked, is just a, d minus b, c. And now multiply, say, row 2 of a by k, and you get the matrix a, b kc, kd. And now what's the determinant of b? Well, it's a times kd, if you prefer factor k, k times ad, minus kc times b, that's just k times bc. Factor k, and you get k times ad, minus bc. Sorry about that. And of course, ad minus bc is the determinant of a. So the determinant of B is K times the determinant of A. And that's the second property. Multiply a row by K, the determinant is multiplied by K. And the finally, and this one is really neat, the third type of row operation. What if we add to row I some multiple of row J, where of course here I is different than j. So add to a row a multiple of a different row, and you ask, okay, 
obtain the matrix B, and how does the determinant of B compare to the determinant of A? What's really neat about this is it doesn't change. The determinant of B is just the determinant of A. And this really is the nicest type of row operation because every time you apply this row operation to a matrix to simplify the determinant to get some zeros in the matrix and you ask, well, what's changed? The answer is nothing. And that's really, really nice. Let's look at an example. Again, take a 2 by 2 matrix, A, B, C, D. The determinant of A we know is AD minus BC. And now let's say that we do row 1 minus 4 of row 2. We get the matrix B. So we'll have A minus 4C, B minus 4D, C, D. And now let's find this determinant. The determinant of B equals, well, A minus 4C times D minus C times B minus 4D. Let's expand out and see if there is some cancellation. So we'll have AD minus 4CD minus BC plus 4CD. And you see that the negative 4CD and the positive 4CD both cancel, and we're left with AD minus BC, which is, of course, the determinant of A. And once again, proving that this is true for any square matrix is actually very difficult, so we're not going to prove it. And now with this, we can introduce zeros in the matrix, specifically with this type of row operation. One simple but key remark. If I ask you, what is the determinant of the transpose of A with respect to the determinant of A. Think of it this way. When you find the determinant of A, you can use cofactor expansion along any row of your choice or column of your choice. When you find the transpose, you swap the rows with columns, columns with rows. And because when you find the determinant, you can use any row or column for your expansion, swapping rows with columns, columns with rows does not change the determinant. And why is this worth mentioning? <coughs> Sorry. It's worth mentioning before because if you apply a row operation and then you transpose the matrix, that's the same as applying a column operation. So whatever is true about row operations and the determinant will also be true about column operations. So go back to this statement. If you take a matrix, you swap two rows, the determinant is negated. Well, whatever is true about rows will be true about columns. So if you take a matrix and you swap two columns, so say C1 with Cj, the determinant is negated. Say you multiply a column of A by K, the determinant of the new matrix will still be K times the determinant of the other. And finally, if you add to a column a multiple of a different column, the determinant stays the same. And that's all because of the fact that the determinant of A and that of A transpose are equal. So we can now use row operations and column operations. And now let's look at the example that we began with. Right? We found the determinant of this matrix to be positive 33. And we only had a single zero. Let's use our knowledge now of column operations and row operations and the determinant to get some more zeros in this matrix. So recall the matrix. We had the determinant of the matrix 3, negative 6, 9, negative 2, 7, negative 2, 0, 1, 5. 
And now let's look at it this way. We're saying we're not happy with a single zero. Let's get some more zeros in this matrix. Well, if you think of it, we have here a 1. And the idea is here, well, let's use a column operation. Let's do, because we can kill the 5 with the 1, if we do column 3 minus 5 of column 2. And if we add or subtract a multiple of a row, sorry, of a column to a different column, the determinant stays the same. So now, let's transform the matrix. So we only change column 3, so recopy column 1 with column 2. And now let's apply the column operation. Column 3 minus 5 column 2. So 9 minus 5 times negative 6 is 9 plus 30, that's 39. Negative 2 Negative 5 times 7 is negative 35, that's negative 37. And finally, 5 minus 5 times 1, 5 minus 5 is 0. And again, because this matrix, if you forget the determinant for a second, this matrix is obtained from this one by applying this type of column operation. And if you add or subtract from a column a multiple of a different column, the determinant stays the same. So both of these matrices have the same determinant. And now what's great is we can now use cofactor expansion along the third row since we have two zeros. So all we have here is we don't have to write down A31 times C31 because this will the zero will kill C31. And the same for A33 C33 because C33 is multiplied by zero gets killed too. So all we have is a 3, 2, C3, 2. And let's compute. A3, 2 is 1. That's it. C3, 2. Well, again, there are two parts, right? Negative 1 to the 3 plus 2 is negative 1 to the 5. That's negative 1. Times the determinant obtained from A after we delete the third row, second column. So kill the third row, second column. You have the matrix 3, 39, negative 2, negative 37. And then we have a single 2 by 2 determinant. So we can use the fact that we know this is AD minus BC. So negative of 3 times negative 37, well, 3 times 30, that's 90. 3 times 7 is 21. That's negative 121. Minus this times this. This is a negative, so it'll give us a plus. 2 times 39. Well, 2 times 30 is 60. 2 times 9 18. That's 78. So plus 78. So negative of. Well, negative 121 plus 78. That's negative 33, right? Oops, sorry, made a mistake. 3 times 30 is 90. 90 plus 21 is 111. Makes more sense. And negative 111 plus 78 is negative 33. Negative, negative 33, positive 33, as we had previously obtained. What's nice about this is we went from two cofactors to only one cofactor. And that's why column and row operations are actually really neat. And the key is use whichever will give you the, the easiest way of finding zeros. You see here it was easier with the column operation. If it's easier with row operations, then use row operations. In our next video, we'll use these ideas to find the determinant of a 4x4 matrix.